Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add drop shadows that go in more than one direction. So, let's get started. Alright, so here in Photoshop, today's tutorial was actually requested via an email, and this person that emailed me wanted to know how to take and put two drop shadows onto one object. So basically, a drop shadow, say, on the left side of an object, and the drop shadow on the right. Whereas if you just use the drop shadow like you normally would in Photoshop, you only get one, and it has to go on either the left or the right, so hence the problem that we're going to be solving. So I'm going to take and just start out by dragging out a rectangle with my rectangle tool. Now since drop shadows are normally gray or black, I'm going to take and change this color so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. We'll just make it a bluer color. So I'm going to take and add a drop shadow by clicking on the FX panel at the bottom of my layers panel. This is off screen, but I'm going to be selecting drop shadow. So now you can play around with these settings. Basically, the settings that you need um, to focus on are this angle. Uh, mine's at zero, so it's going to be pushing the drop shadow off to the left side. Um, you can see that you can tweak this however you would like for your project. But in general, I'm just going to be putting it on the left. Now, the first problem you're probably going to have is having global light checked. Now, if you don't know what global light does, I'm just going to give you a quick example. I'm going to click OK to put that drop shadow onto my object. Now if we take and make another rectangle just below that, and we put a drop shadow on that one, if we take and adjust the angle on this one, you'll see that it adjusts the angle on both of those. Now that's because it's using global light. Now this is a very helpful um, basically tool within Photoshop that allows you to keep one um, unified light source so that you're not uh, messing that up at all. Um, but when you want to have a drop shadow going on both sides of an object, then this does um, basically impede your progress. So what we're going to do is turn that off on our layer. So I'm just going to delete that other rectangle. We'll open the drop shadow back up. And what we're going to do is turn off global light. So once we've done that, it basically sets your settings for your drop shadow back to the default, um, unfortunately. So you'll have to reset that. So we'll just get it to look something like this um, for the purposes of the tutorial. So I'm just going to click OK, and now our drop shadow is applied without global light. So now what we need to do is basically get one on the other side. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is by just duplicating the layer, opening up the drop shadow for the second layer, and flipping it exactly the other direction. So now we have it going to 180 degrees with global light off and you can adjust the distance, size, and spread um, to your liking. So I'm going to click OK. So now you can see that we have a drop shadow on both sides of our rectangle here. So we basically have two rectangles. Um, if you wanted to combine them into one, you could put another layer up, just a new layer, select all three of those, and then just go to merge layers. It's slightly off screen and it'll take and put them all into one. Now you don't have a shape layer anymore, so you can't scale this um, basically vector, um, you can't vector scale this, but um, they are all in one layer if you need them like that for some reason. So there is one little problem left with this. Um, let's say that we didn't have the second one, so I'll just turn that off. With our first layer, if we took and had, say, a 50% fill, and then we just duplicated our layer, then we're going to have um, a darker shape right here, um, just because we're duplicating the fill um, with a second rectangle. So what we can do um, is basically take on our new layer, so our second shape, we can turn the fill all the way down to zero. That way all we have is that second um, drop shadow and we have nothing else basically on the layer. So that's going to eliminate a lot of um, overlapping if you're messing with the opacity. So you see now you can change this to whatever you want and it's not affected by the layer above it. And if you take the layer above it, you can basically move around just that drop shadow by itself um, without actually um, adjusting anything else. So um, lastly, you might be wondering what you would actually use this for because currently um, it kind of looks like we have two different light sources. So um, if you wanted to have two different light sources in your project, uh, this would be helpful to you. Um, also, I've seen this done a lot of times with websites. Um, I'm just going to select both of these. If I scale these up and to the sides, it starts to look like kind of a website uh, look. You'll see this would be your main content area and then you have your background behind there. Um, say you're looking at YouTube, this would be the background area and this would be where the video is right here and such. And so in order to basically pull the main content area away from the background, you'd have this drop shadow. Now you would be doing that with CSS and HTML um, for your website, but if you needed to mock that up in Photoshop, this is how you would do it. Um, so that's just one of the examples that I've seen this done before. Um, so I hope you guys can find some use for this. Um, I hope I helped out that person who emailed me. 
and I hope you learned a little bit about drop shadows and global light. So thanks again for watching. Um, I do have a new tutorial coming out every week, so be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.